Hey guys, this is Delmar here, and welcome back to Mullen Switcher Bits. Say, remember my Mario Kart DS review? Now I know a lot of you are going to be asking, what about Mario Kart 7, Delmar? Don't you love that? Well, I mean, I do love it, but I just prefer this a little bit more than Mario Kart 7. Well, we're now at Mario Kart 7, and you know what? It's still a great game, and it's one of the best games on the 3DS. But personally, I still prefer Mario Kart DS over this. But why is that exactly? Well, let's find out. Well, the Mario Kart 7 footage. Well, before we get to the stuff I didn't like about this game, let's talk about, well, the game itself. First off, a bit of some behind the scenes stuff. Due to Nintendo being busy with multiple titles at the time, like Skyward Sword and Nintendogs Plots Cats, Mario Kart 7 was given a lower priority with only 8 staff members to begin work on it. But then Nintendo consulted with Metroid Prime developers Retro Studios to co-develop the game, in which they focused on providing the Retro Grand Prix courses in order to learn both lessons about the development process for Mario Kart games and what makes a good course from design perspective. This is obvious with the DK Jungle Course, which is based upon Donkey Kong Country Returns. The new drivers joining in the Mario Kart Madness this time around are... Strange. First off is Shy Guy, as a playable character in the game instead of a download play from the last portable title, Metal Mario, a Wiggler, a Lakito, and the Honey Bee Queen from Super Mario Galaxy. Okay, I'm down. I, don't, I, I was rolling with it, so a bit of an odd choice for the new characters, but a welcome addition. Except I'm still recovering from that one moment. Oh, so disgusting! <laughs> Although I was a bit disappointed when I saw that Waluigi wasn't in the game. He was absent due to time constraints from what I heard, which is ironic considering that his course, Waluigi Pinball, is in this game. And while the bikes don't return in this title, there are several new additions added in for you to race with. Like now you can customize your vehicle. You can select the body, the tires, and a glider to build your desired cart. You unlock more parts by collecting coins from the Grand Prix. By the way, the coins return from Mario Kart Super Circuit. And the best part is that each custom part has its own advantage and disadvantage. So you can experiment with which driver and cart parts work out the best for you. And despite the bikes not returning, you can still perform tricks by pressing R1. But now you must be wondering what the heck is the air glider part for? Because now you can use air gliders and underwater propellers on the race courses. Which brings me to one thing I didn't like about this game. The underwater propellers aren't as impressive as the air gliders. Now I love using the air gliders. When you're in the air, it can provide some speed for your vehicle when airbound and you can tilt your car up and down to fall gently or quickly plummet to the ground. While in underwater, it feels like you're losing speed, and honestly it's just not as impressive as the air glider in terms of track design and speed for your cart. Not saying the tracks that heavily use this feature are bad, but not quite as good as the air gliders. Another thing I didn't like was the gyroscope on the Fleet DS in this game. I mentioned this problem back in my Star Fox 64 Original Against Remake video, but I'll mention this again because I didn't really explain that well at the time. So if you press up on the D-pad, you switch to a first person view and you can now steal by tilting the 3DS. There was even an accessory made for the system for that feature as well. But honestly, I still don't like it. What's different from motion controls from a portable title and from a home console is that, well, you're not moving the screen around. And sure, you're just moving slightly left and slightly right to steer, but I felt that it was very wobbly to steal, and just not as tight as the regular controls. But you know what? Just because I don't like these new gameplay mechanics, doesn't make this game bad in any sense. One thing I love about Nintendo is that they try to come up with new ways to play. And sure, there may be some things that we all do like and don't like with each new console or new entry in a series, but innovation requires taking risk. And if you like the underwater segments and the gyroscope a lot, that's great! I'm glad you like them, and I give Nintendo credit by putting these new mechanics in the game. But still, while I love the air gliding bits, the underwater and gyroscope features I don't care much about. Anyway, let's talk about the new items in the item roster. The Fire Flower allows the player to throw fireballs at other carts to spend out of control. 
and I would say make the engines explode, but I don't think that would be very fair. The Super Leaf also gets some love, as its tail is attached to the cart, which can deflect items and knock over opponent drivers. And did I mention you lose coins when you get a hit? And finally, the Lucky 7. Now I do admit I was a bit confused when they called this game Mario Kart 7. Hey! Someone get James Wolf on a case! I I'm so confused about this title and how it chronologically goes with the other games. But this? Oh my. You'll be surrounded with seven items that you can use all at once. Minus the blue spiny shell, thank goodness. Now let's move on to the race courses. They're awesome! I love it! There are so many good tracks from this game. Daisy Hills, Rock Rock Mountain, Mario Circuit, Music Park, Piranha Plant Slide, and the inclusion of Woohoo Island from Wii Sports Resort also makes an appearance, twice in this game. Unlike past installments, there are three courses that have three sections, with each section counting as one lap. So instead of going around Woohoo Loop three times, when you pass the certain checkpoint, that's a lap. Not to mention a small additional beat of the track's music plays if you're in first. The smoke be phased if you slow down, get hit with an item, or go off-road. Oh, and who could forget the classic Kalamari Desert joke? I like trains. <laughs> eh, not as funny as the original, but it passes. So with all that in mind, how's Mario Kart 7? Well, to be fair, I'm not a fan of the underwater sections, and also the gyroscope isn't really that fun to use. But I mean, despite all those problems, I still enjoy this game. The tracks are ingenious and really creative this time. Uh, the online play is fun, and the air glider is one of the best features of this game. And I do admit that I'm not a huge fan of the underwater and gyroscope. I still give Nintendo credit for at least trying to put some new ideals into Mario Kart, so I mean, good effort for them. We've now been through seven different games, each that has improved onto themselves with every new entry. But now, on the final episode of this Mullins Retro Bit, we take a look at the game that started this whole retrospective singing majig, Mario Kart 8.